Today we're making adorable rustic St. Patrick's Day decor. Welcome to Up All Night DIY. I'm Monica. Thanks for joining me. I'm excited to participate in the What Would You Make Challenge, hosted by my sweet friends, Zaina of OK at Home DIY, Connie of Connie's Creative Creations, and our guest host is Marika of Marika's Creations. Incredibly talented ladies. I've dropped links to their channels below, as well as the playlists. My first project is this cozy Irish cottage. Let's get into it. I cut my cottage from three quarter inch pine with my scroll saw. It's all sanded and ready for paint. I give the house and chimney two coats of ceram coat white. The roof will get one coat of Americana Honey Brown. This is an undercoat. We'll be adding some texture in a moment, so one coat is all we really need. To add the texture to the roof, I'm using Josonia Texture Paste. You could use either spackle or caulk for a similar effect. Whatever you have. I'll mix some of the paste with honey brown paint. The mixture will be slightly lighter than the paint on its own, but that'll work nicely. And we'll just make sure that it's really well blended. I want this to look like a thatched roof the kind Irish cottages have, so I'll apply the paste with a vertical stroke to mimic the thatching. I fill in the entire roof, including the sides. The paste will retain the stroke marks, giving us that straw-like appearance, and this paste dries pretty quickly. I do help it along with a heat gun just to speed up the process, but it does have a decent amount of open working time, but once you're done fussing with it, it dries quick. I apply the paste the same way on the sides with a downward stroke and I just continue until the entire roof is finished. So I searched for cottage door and window on Pinterest. I found these and I sized them in Photoshop, printed them on cardstock and cut them out. We'll be applying these with Mod Podge. So first I sprayed them with clear matte sealer. You'll want to do this if you have an inkjet printer Otherwise, the Mod Podge will smear the ink. I deposit a layer of Mod Podge to the wood and into the back of the paper before applying. I thought this door was perfect for this project because it almost has the shape of a harp. I actually think it's like a fairy door from a fairy garden. Anyway, I'm going to hit that with my brayer. And I apply the window the same way. Mod Podge the wood, then the back of the window, and then I'll hit both the door and the window with my brayer to make sure that they have really good contact. And then I'm going to give both a nice healthy top coat. I'm using Folk Art Floating Medium to add some shading and some cross hatching. I've already shaded it with Americana Sun Bleached and now I'll cross hatch to give it a model look. It's kind of hard to see this color, that's why I didn't show it to you, but you'll see me shade with the sand dune. Okay, so I prepped the brush with the medium, then I side load with the sand dune. I'll drop the link to my shading video below, which goes into more detail about the process. So what I'll do now is I'll shade any area that would have a shadow around the thatching, the window and the doors, and the perimeter of the cottage, as well as the um, chimney. I 
And you can see that I reload my brush anytime I need to. And I always shade the sides too. You know that I'd like to add layers to my shading, so I'll repeat the process with Spice Brown. This will blend the edges of the paper, and it also adds depth. It really gives it a nice aged look. If you don't have a way to cut out your own cottage, I know that the Dollar Tree, well, most Dollar Trees, not mine, but most of them, do have little houses. You could always do something like this with one of those. It would be just as easy. Add a wee bit more cross hatching and we'll crunch up the sides too. We'll also shade the roof to add more dimension. With my silhouette, I cut a vinyl 17 and I placed it into a bottle cap, which I'm going to use to decorate that negative space below the roof. But first, I want to grunge it up. I paint the edges with burnt sienna and I shake on some real cinnamon. The cinnamon gives a true rust color and texture and smells good too. Win-win. I'm using 3-in-1 glue to affix it into place. And as always, I spray it with clear matte sealer. Also, I painted a wee wooden spool with spring green, tied baker string around the center, and added some dried flower buds. This is going to be my wee potted plant to sit by the front door. Cute. It's all about the details, isn't it? Here's a look at it all finished. I think it turned out so cute. I love it. Our next project is a wee shepherd's hut. I cut a piece of two by four about five inches long and I'll use a variety of greens to paint it. I have no real plan here. Just figured I'd see where it goes. My first coat will be this really pretty vintage green. It's folk art aloe. I apply one loose coat to the entire block of wood. I really kind of want some of that wood, the raw wood, to show through. My next coat will be Folk Art Thicket. It's a deeper green with a hint of blue. I felt that this also had a vintage flavor, so I'm applying it with a dirty brush. This will be slapdash application, but I want some of that aloe to be visible, so you get the idea. Another layer. This time I'm coming in with spring green, again, with a dirty brush. Honestly, I just keep adding colors until it pleases my eye. I think one of my favorite things about making rustic vintage is there are no mistakes. You can just keep adding layers until you're happy. I forgot about this piece. It's a bit of molding that'll be attached to the roof. So, before I add my next color, I'll paint the molding to match the block. 
Right, okay. One more layer. This time hunter green. This brings a bit of richness to it, and it's a close match to the windows and doors, which we'll be adding next. And again, I'm just kind of cross-hatching and slap-dashing the paint on anywhere I think, you know, it looks good. So before we add the paper elements, I want to distress this a bit. So I'll give it a good sanding with my sanding block, paying particular attention to the edges and anywhere where it would naturally be worn. I just want to expose some of that raw wood again. I've wiped away all the dust, and now I'll add Mod Podge to the wood and paper just like before. I'm adding the window toward the rear of the hut. Just trying to decide which way it should go. And I roll it with my brayer and apply a top coat. Now I'll add my wee banner. I designed this in uh, Photoshop. The door will get placed here on the side of the block. So I have a small window for the other side, which I'll add once the first side dries. Now I'll shade around the paper elements and the perimeter, this time with Ceramco charcoal. I felt like the charcoal was a better choice because this is a darker color and the, the brown wasn't really showing up. So, charcoal it is. And here I'm just going around the perimeter to kind of give it more of a grungy look. You get the idea. I attach the molding to the roof with wood glue and hot glue for that quick grab. I'm going to line up the edge of the molding with the back edge of the hut. And I'll explain why I'm doing this when I put the roof on. I have here the pieces to assemble the wheel carriage. I cut four wheels from a dale and four inch length of square dale and I'll add a couple of pieces of bamboo skewer. I'll paint them all with charcoal. Also, I've drilled holes in the wheels and the square dale to fit the skewers through, but you'll see when I assemble it. I'm also dry brushing all the pieces with burnt sienna to make it look rusted. To make the roof, I glued a piece of my favorite Harlequin scrapbook paper to black cardstock using a glue stick. I did this to give it some extra body. Then I'm going to top it with a coat of Mod Podge, also for extra support. And also to make the paint, or I'm sorry, to make the paper more paintable. So I'm just going to attach this, I'll cut it out, and place on that top coat of Mod Podge. But we'll jump ahead. So now I'll float some aloe paint around the edges, and I do a few strokes in the center. I want to pull in some of that green onto the roof. Adding the green makes it more cohesive, I think. I trim the long edges of the paper with pinking shears for some extra detail. With a line of hot glue, I'll attach the roof. You can see here that placing the molding to one side gives me a deeper, longer slope to the front side of the hut. So that's why, that's the look I wanted. That's why I'm doing it that way. And I'm going to add hot glue to both ends of the hut as well to hold that roof in place. So I think here you can kind of get an idea of how the one side is longer than the other. Okay, on to the next. I use my 3-in-1 glue to attach a rusty 17 bottle cap to the march banner on the front and I hammer a big old nail into the roof as a chimney. I glue the square dale down the middle of the underside of the hut. Again, I'm using both wood glue and a little bit of hot glue. 
I assemble the wheel carriage by pushing the skewers through the holes in the square dale. Then I push the wheels onto the skewers. I snip off the excess skewer and I touch up the raw end with a dab of paint. I wired the two scrap pieces of skewer that I had and I made a ladder and I'll glue them to the holes that I drilled just below the door. And again, a coat of clear matte sealer. Look it, how cute is this shepherd's hut? I love it. I hope you like it too. Project three, Irish Babas. Of course, we need some sheep, so I cut a mommy you and her baby. I'll give them both two coats of white, both sides. I paint their faces and ears charcoal as well as their hooves. I'm just making little teardrop shapes for their ears. I shade around them first in sun bleached and then in sand dune. Because sun bleached is so light, it can be really hard to see when I video, but in person, you can really see it, it really makes a difference. This is the sand dune. This is much easier to see on camera, even though this is kind of light too. Hopefully you get the idea of what I'm doing. I'm really just outlining the white part of the sheep. With a small liner brush, I paint wee swirls and sun bleached to represent their woolly curls. I tied a bit of green and white baker string around their necks and I'm going to glue on three dried bloods and we're done. Of course, we'll spray them with clear mat sealer as always. And there they are, in all their sheepy goodness. You could actually leave these up for Easter too. We'll take a final look at all the projects. Thank you Zaina and Connie for hosting, and Marika for guest hosting. I appreciate you including me, had a lot of fun. Please be sure to check out their channels listed in the description box, along with the playlist and a list of my supplies. You're definitely going to find lots of inspiration in this playlist. Everybody who's a part of it, are, they're all just awesome. So, don't miss it. Go over, show them some love. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And all that good stuff. Stay creative, my friends. Thanks for hanging with me. See you next time. Up all night with Monica.